Good afternoon and welcome to Dartmoor. And in this video, we're gonna be doing a few things. First and foremost, of course, I'm here on Dartmoor on location to take landscape photographs. But I'm gonna be doing it with this brand new lens I've got here from Vilchox. This is one from their pro lineup. This is the AF27 1.2 for Z mount. say I'm quite excited this afternoon because the conditions, dare I say, are actually looking quite good for landscape photography. It has been weeks and weeks of terrible weather, so I'm finally out to be able to create some landscape photographs and it's a really good feeling. Now, I would normally this is a point in the video I do lots of preamble, but someone left a comment on my video, one of my videos recently said I, I spoke for five minutes without actually getting to the juicy stuff. So I'm gonna try and compress what I normally say into a very short period of time. So we are here, are here to take landscape photographs. I will be taking it with this lens. I'm gonna be taking all the photographs with this lens. And once I put this one back on my ZFC there, I'm gonna hopefully shoot the rest of the video with this lens as well. I'll talk about specifications. I'll talk with it, about what it's like to use for landscape photographs because that's the photographs I mostly take. And I will also talk to you uh, about video as well, shooting video with it. And one final thing, Phil Chalk did send me this lens out, but they're not paying me for this video. They haven't asked me to say anything. I have tested many Vilchox lenses before. In fact, most of my videos over the last two, three, maybe four years have all been shot with Vilchox lenses. So I've got quite a bit of experience with them, but I'm looking forward to trying out these uh, ones with the new Pro badge. So I'm gonna swap this lens over in a second. There's a Vilchox lens I've got in there at the moment, the 13 mil for the Z mount. I'm gonna swap it over for this one and try and shoot the rest of it with this uh, uh, lens here. Um, right, so preamble over. I'm gonna go over to the other part of uh, where am I? Bear, bear down tours. I'm gonna to go over there. Um, and in the meantime, I've already shot a couple of photographs already to start with the other part of the tour. So while I walk over there, why don't you have a look at the photographs I've already captured? to the other side of Bears Down Tor and um, just before the sunset, it's getting kind of to that golden hour and bit now, bits of cloud in the sky, so I'm gonna be moving on to photographs. But before I do that, let me talk about the specifications of this lens. Now I'm actually filming at the moment with the lens on the camera, so that's the AF27s on there, on my Nikon ZFC. And I've got it dialed right down to uh, F1.2. As you can see, it's really thrown out the background. So let me talk about the specifications. As always, I'm gonna read them off the list because terrible at remembering stuff, and I don't wanna miss anything. So the focal length is 27 millimeters, but this is a crop sensor lens, a DX lens. So that gives you the equivalent of 40 millimeters on full frame. Now, because it's Z mount, it will work equally happily on DX cameras as well as FX Z cameras as well. Got an aperture that goes from F1.2 to F16. It's got a control ring there, which you can turn, uh, and you can either put it on uh, A, which means you can control the aperture via the camera, or you can use the control ring on the lens itself. And one of the new things in this Pro lens is it's got a clickable switch, so you can have it on smooth aperture change, or you can click through the range as well. That's quite nice to see. It also has a manual focus ring, the lens doesn't have any VR, so you're gonna to have to rely on VR on your camera. If it's got it, my ZFC doesn't, so I've got no VR, but not necessarily a problem for me because I tend to shoot off the tripod. What else have we got? We've got a 67 millimeter thread size. It's got a metal lens mount. On the mount, there's a USB socket for firmware updates. So Vilchox do keep their lenses up to date, which is good. What else have we got? So some of the things we haven't seen on previous Vilchox lenses, the unique to the Pro line, this has got an AF-MF switch, which I find really handy. I've got that on my Nikol lenses. Quite handy because I, even though I shoot my landscapes in automatic focus, flicking that switch to MF puts up the focus peak in as well, which gives you a nice handy guide. It's also got a programmable function button, that smooth aperture control that you can flip between clicky and smooth, which I just mentioned. Uh, it's both dust and drip resistant, but it's not 
fully weather sealed and the front element is treated as well to help resist water and dirt which is probably quite handy up here and that's what gives it the features of the pro badge so that's the specifications of the lens uh, now that i've covered the technical bit of it let's go and see what it's like to take landscape photographs so I've opened up the aperture a little bit, or closed down the aperture, I should say, just so you can see what's behind me. So I'm not shooting at f1.2, but it is still that 27 millimeter lens. Come up to this elevated viewpoint to capture a picture of the tour there just behind me. And at the moment, it's just catching the light from the setting sun, which has got a nice soft golden color. It's also catching the light here of this foreground grass, you see, which is nice, add a nice bit of depth to my image. The only challenge I've got is there's absolutely no cloud in the sky. It was quite cloudy earlier, it was quite nice. So I'm glad I captured those pictures while I did actually. Um, but I'll make the most of it. It's still a very pleasant evening, even though it is cold. So I guess the only challenge I think with shooting with this particular lens is its focal length. 40 mil, 27 mil on crop, 40 mil, 35 mil equivalent is a bit, for me at least anyway, a bit of an awkward focal length. I'm very much a wide angle photographer. I love my 14 to 30 lens. So shooting at 40 mil has forced me to think slightly differently about some of my, my compositions. I've not been able to get in the same positions as I would normally expect standing a lot further back. But it's been really fun using the lens nonetheless. And um, it's kind of, I think for this composition, probably gonna work quite well. We're gonna go home and we're gonna talk about uh, using this lens for video. I've also got some other shots that I'll talk about as well, and then I'll share my final thoughts about this lens. But I tell you what, I'll be glad to get back indoors because it's freezing out here. Welcome back. It's good to be somewhere warm again, though I did have a really good time up there on Dartmoor. So coming up in the rest of this video, we're gonna talk about video. Um, but before I do that, I've just gotta do a couple of things. First, I'll tell you that I'm shooting the rest of this video purely with the Nikon ZFC with the Vilchox AF 27mm Pro lens. I've got it open right up at f1.2 so you can see what it looks like in a controlled environment. You can see it's really thrown out the background there, even in a small room like this. But I'll talk more about video in a second. So I've shown you the landscape photographs that I've captured, and you know, that's what I do, I capture landscape photographs. But I have taken um, a couple of portraits that I'm gonna show in a second. Now, please don't criticize me for my portraits. It's not what I do, but I thought I'd get a couple of headshots anyway, just for uh, just to show a kind of a sample images. I've got one indoor one that I did for a friend of mine and another one out on location. And of course, it wouldn't be a lens review video if I didn't capture a couple of pictures of my dog, Monty, as well. So I'm gonna pop these up on the screen and I'll see you again in a second. Okay, let's move on from stills to video. And this is actually where I've been using filter shots lenses for the last few years. Um, I've been, like I said, I think when I was out on location, I've created most of my videos in some shape or form, some part, if not all of them, have all used Viltrox lenses. And the reason I use those Viltrox lenses are they're relatively inexpensive and the fast aperture. And this 27mm f1.2 is no different. In fact, I think this is maybe the fastest one I've got. I think the other ones have 1.6 and 1.8. And for me, the real advantage of having that 1.2 aperture is all the light it lets in. Now, this room, it might look quite light, but it's actually not. So having that f1.2 aperture to let loads of light in is really helpful. Uh, even when I'm outdoors, I'm shooting videos on location. The challenge could be I'm shooting at you know, just before sunrise or just after sunset. So there's not a lot of light about. So having a, a lens that can let in all that light is really useful for video. And the other thing is, well, shooting at f1.2 used to be really difficult because it's such a, how do you keep track of the focus, especially in video? 
But fortunately, you know, modern cameras like the Nikon Z cameras that I use, like the, the Nikon Z SC that I'm filming this on, all have eye autofocus and it's very reliable uh, and it just locks on. So I I'm feel confident that I can open this lens up to 1.2 and I'm not gonna get any problems with focusing. I've also used this uh, lens on my Nikon Z8 as well, because I've filmed a number of, uh, so I've been using this lens for you know a couple of months now and I've filmed quite a few videos on it already. It's been a, a recent episodes of On My Bookshelf. I did some uh, printing here, I did a printing video and I filmed a lot of that all in here and that was all shot with that lens as well. So, and it's all been faultless for me. So I've not had any problems with it missing focus. Uh, certainly not for, for video anyway. And then back to the, the focal length, 40 millimeters. Well, that for me is slightly challenging for stills photography because I'm quite a bit of a wide angle photographer. And obviously, you know, having the flexibility of a zoom when you're out landscapes is, is quite good. But really, fixed 40 mil for, for video, particularly when I'm uh, in here, it's actually a really good focal length and combined that with the f1.2 aperture. It actually gives me quite a bit of separation between myself uh, and, and the background there. So it makes my videos look really nice. So I'm quite happy with that 40 millimeter focal length. So when it, come, when it comes to video, I think, you know, this is a, a really good lens and it's one that I'm probably gonna use continually. I think it's gonna be pretty well permanently attached by, to my Nikon ZSE. Okay, let's see if I can summarize my thoughts on this lens. Let's talk about stills photography first, specifically landscape photography. For me, that 27 millimeter focal length on a crop center, which is 40 mil in 35 millimeter terms, full frame terms, is a bit of an awkward focal length for me. I'm probably not gonna go out and use this lens to capture landscape photographs. The type of photographs that you might take in the landscape might be different. This might be a very good focal length for you. Uh, it's just not probably one for me. I can't argue with the quality of the images that I get from it. It's just not a, I much prefer sort of wide angle zooms from it from the landscapes. However, taking pictures of people, you know, family members, etc., or pictures of my dog Monty, this lens, wow, oh, I really like it. It really excels for me in that aspect. I'm coupled, you know, if I put it on the Z8, for example, which has a tremendous autofocus system, I can be confident I can open the lens right up and I can still get sharp pictures and they can look really, really nice as well. So I'm very, very happy with the capabilities and image quality of the lens uh, when coupled with something like the, the Z8. Oh, it, I mean, it works perfectly well on the, the ZFC with eye autofocus as well. And one thing I did notice with the previous non-pro lenses that I've had from Viltrox, they were subject to a little bit of vignetting. Now this wasn't a major problem. I was either cropping in post or uh, Viltrox provided um, lens profiles for Lightroom. So that all these issues were kind of quite easily fixed in post, especially if you had the lens right, right open at say f1.6 or f4.8, there was a little bit of vignetting, but it was, as you stopped down, that kind of disappeared. With this new pro lens, f1.2, now I'm gonna put up a picture, this is unedited, this is the unedited picture of the outdoor portrait that I took. I couldn't see any vignetting at all. So they've obviously improved the optics in this lens to um, deal with that, that particular issue. So I think there's been a, a particular step up in image quality from this lens. Then moving on to video, really happy with the video performance as I've just talked about, wide open aperture, coupled with eye autofocus either on the Z8 or the ZFC, absolutely nails it. Really confident that I can use those wide open apertures for video. So that's another use I'm really gonna use this lens for as well as doing sort of portraits of the dog uh, and family members and, and stuff like that. So. I think overall, if you're looking for a budget, fast prime lens, this should definitely be on your list of considerations. I think for the value for money that you get um, and the capabilities of the lens, capabilities of the lens, particularly with these new pro features of the lens, such as the AF, MF button, the function, uh, programmable function button, the clickable aperture, the improvement in the image quality as well, I think all make it one worthwhile that requires your serious consideration if you're thinking of getting a lens like this. Now, if you do actually want to pick up one of these lenses, I'll include a link for it in the video description below. Well, I'm just about coming to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked learning about this new Viltrox Pro lens. I hope you enjoyed seeing me out in the landscape, capturing landscape photographs. And of course, I know, I know definitely some of you love seeing pictures of Monty, so that's why I did include three of them. But if you do have a little bit more time, I'm going to pop up some playlists. I'll pop up the playlist of actually the other Viltrox lenses 
that I've reviewed and I'll pop up another playlist there as well. So if you've got a bit of extra time, why not watch one of those videos as well? But thank you again for joining me and I'll see you again in the next one.